That was beautiful. That's the, the healing sound frequencies based on the work of Dr. Leonard Horowitz. Um, he was a, was a friend of mine, and he actually uh, was working with a, a guy named J Dr. Joey Puello, who was having some uh, unique visitations, uh, kind of like uh, uh, Joseph Maroney with a, an, an angel type thing. I could use a chair here. That would be good, though. Okay. Thank you. And um, so uh, he was getting uh, the angel appeared at his bed and told about the book of Numbers. And um, uh, basically from that, they utilized the, the science of uh, numerology to look at various uh, information in regards to uh, sound frequencies and finding that some of our sound frequencies aren't really exact. So this is based on the sound of, uh, they call it the lost chord or the, the sixth. So some of this, uh, the sound frequencies are very good. It's uh, um, good for healing the body. For those of you who have followed my work, um, I work with, uh, um, how are we doing on the show here? But I work with sound, light, and color. And we're going to be doing some demonstrations today and showing you how coherent light or lasers work with the body. Um, uh, light is information, knowledge. And so light actually is a big part of our, um, our reality and our consciousness. So I think it's important that we understand electricity and light. We're going to be doing some demonstrations here with crystals, Tesla coils. I'm going to explain about the ver various pyramid products that we have and, and do a pyramid lecture. And then after that, as the time permits, we're going to go into uh, the Venusian secret science of ascension. So we'll be talking about uh, this information um, from uh, the Venusian. So we're up and running. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, move us right into the... Uh, the pyramid uh, lecture here. And let's see, I think this is going to be, let me see if this works for me. Oh, good. Okay. So um, my website is called thepromisedrevealed.com. And um, I think if you uh, check it out, you're going to find some interesting information. Um, I had a lot of experiences when I was younger, and my contacts continue. In fact, I'm actually uh, working with several uh, contactees. One is Mr. Raymond Andrew Keller. Um, he's written three books called the Venus, Venus Rising Trilogy. Um, I also work with Dr. Frank Stranges. How many of you have heard of uh, Commander Valiant Thor? Okay, he was a stranger at the Pentagon. He landed in Virginia and actually um, um, I'm sitting on the cord, sorry. <laughs> he actually spoke to Eisenhower and Nixon and offered them help from the Venusians um, in regards to technologies, but non-harmful uh, or um, let's call it not weaponry, but technologies for healing and to understand uh, how to transfer to a universal economic system and basically discard our illusion and fear-based control matrix, which the governments were into. And Eisenhower and Nixon actually wanted to make changes, but um, they refused his offer and literally made a deal with the devil or the greys. So if you've been abducted by the greys, that's not a contact experience. That's an abduction. And these are beings that have been actually literally cast here and they can't leave. There's a type of technology that doesn't allow that. They'll be here till the end times and the end of cleaning. So um, I have a lot of metaphysical information. And if you want to come to my book, my booth, I'll be sharing and I can tell you lots of different things in various subjects. I do have pictures that are going to probably be very difficult for people to assimilate, but to understand that Theresa May 
Angela Merkel and the president of Lithuania are actually Hitler's uh, offspring. And there's evidence of that. And another one really hard, and I don't publish this in public because I don't want to be shut down, but Obama is Hitler's grandson. You'll see photographs of Eva Brown, the other daughter, um, Angela Merkel. Her name was Anna Dunham, Annie Duke, but her real name is Anna Hitler, and she came here uh, at an early age. You'll see pictures of Ava Brown with Barack Obama as a child. And she was under mind control. They sent her to <laughs> um, um, Malcolm X under mind control program where she would be spit on and aggressively, what's a white bitch do? You know, like in, the, in those days. <laughs> but uh, finally, Malcolm X said, leave her alone. She seduced him. And um, that's controversial. <laughs> so that's kind of the stuff that I'm an expert in, but I'm not focusing on that anymore. I'm focusing on the healing and the messages of love and truth uh, from the Galactic Confederation and the Hierarchy of Light. And one of the things that happened when I was young was understanding pyramids. What, are, what is a, this pyramid? It's, it's, a, it's a lens, right? It has energy, pyramid, fire in the middle. So <clears throat> that energy uh, actually produces a life force field in the center. It focuses and collects the Earth's magnetism and creates a balanced energy field. We have chakras. This is electromagnetic energy. So uh, when you put a balanced field on your head, it helps detoxify the brain and uh, uh, centers the pineal, pituitary, the thyroid gland. So I have three different models. You can try them out. One has nickel gold, and that's a relaxing, a hypothalamus. The other one has nickel gold and copper. Copper resonates with the um, um, <laughs> with the adrenals. So this kind of has a pyramid energy with the adrenals. Now gold uh, molecular structure is, is kind of like that, just like a diamond. So there are four elements in our um, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. Everything in the physical plane is composed of those four elements in various degrees. So the prism acts like a pri the pyramid acts as a prism and refracts the energy into seven rays or seven energies levels of consciousness. This is a diamond, which is an octahedral shape. So you see that it's actually 52 degrees, just like the Great Pyramid. There's sacred life force energies in the pyramid shape, and um, on all the worlds associated with various federations, there are. Uh, um, uh, pyramid temples, and we have them on our Earth. But these, these, uh, oops. Uh, <laughs> so we have them on our Earth, and they can tell the condition of a society by looking at the pyramid temples if they're in good repair. And these temples um, are have various functions. On the earth, the Great Pyramid was placed there um, to help balance the earth. 423 feet below the pyramid is a very highly advanced technological device that keeps the earth uh, uh, stable in its, um, on its axis because we have a little tilt and it's actually uh, a technology to help the earth. There's also a device above the Queen's Chamber and the Pyramid, and these things will remain hidden and unknown to the public. Now, gold is a sacred metal of the sun. Its molecular structure shape is a pyramid. Why do people value gold? Because of the life force energies. It's the sun metal. And uh, some religions um, have degraded gold and not degraded gold, but they have misused it in our society. We hoard it in vaults so that it's not be used in, by the body. The Mayans thought that the return of uh, Vera 
uh, Quetzalcoatl and uh, Viracocha was coming, so they used to use the gold in their temples to line them and to meditate and to use the frequency of gold for healing. So when the Spaniards wanted it, they go, oh, good, here's the gold, what are you going to do with it? And when they ran out of gold, they killed them. So this is kind of the uh, problem with the gold and jewelry now. We have people wearing it for ostentatious displays of of uh, arrogance and wealth when they should be used sacredly in healing because these uh, gemstones uh, are healing to the body. So we talked about oxygen, nitrogen, uh, a carbon, and um, hydrogen. The four earth elements, earth, air, wind, and fire. So even though the, the natives are um, not it lost the scientific knowledge, the essence of the four directions and the four sacred elements are related to the science and the technology of the pyramid shape. Now all shape have energy fields, and you'll notice here, this is called the Anu. This is the fractal life wave of the holographic nature of the universe. Everything is a, is a projection of the mind of God. <clears throat> we live in a a holographic universe, and I'll explain real quickly about a hologram. If I have a statue here, and I have a laser beam shooting on the front, and I take another laser beam shooting on the back, and I intersect those laser beams, so I split the beam, then you have the uh, light covering the whole statue. Then I put that on a picture, and if I take that photograph, hologram, I can turn it and just see the back. It's like you can see a 360 degrees of a thing on a two-dimensional picture. If I cut that picture into four pieces, or if I cut it into 60 pieces, you will still see the entire thing. In that way, we are all one. Like we're all drops. So this is the basic science. I work with a, a physicist, Dr. Fred Bell, in our context. The pyramid energy properly defined as progressive energy transfer through geometric focusing and dynamic electrical amplification over a measured plane of coordinates. But basically, it's just this uh, very uh, pure life force that produces um, what's called the anu, which is available in the electron of a negative ion. Negative ions build cells. When we breathe, we breathe in through our lungs. We have an exchange of carbon dioxide and negative ions. Um, so when you uh, wear the pyramid on your head, it helps create a, a beneficial environment and releases and balances complex neural hormones into your, into your brain. Um, and negative ions are produced by nature. Plants produce negative ions. That's why if you burn the forest and deforest, you're going to have problems. When you put pollution in the air, it um, uh, causes a, a low negative ion and a high positive ion count. So your biological field can function on the electricity. Now, that's kind of like, if you can imagine, that's kind of what our, the radial arms of a galaxy look like from far away. Ours is something similar. And th we have an iron heme chain in our blood that actually is shaped like, it's kind of like the disc uh, that we have up there that we talk about, the Pleiadian and Andromedan jewelry. I'll get into that in a minute. So the promised gold is relaxing, works on the hypothalamus. Then the uh, promised copper works on the adrenals. So you have balance and things. It's an excellent, cheap, easy way tool to help you feel your chakras and to work into uh, things. Sorry about the picture. That's the silver, nickel, gold, copper, and silver. And the uh, silver resonates with the pineal gland. So uh, it helps in concentration. <clears throat> this device over here, um, oh, I'm sorry, over here, these two devices are given by the Pleiadians. Originally, we had what is called an uh, elf wave on all electrical lines throughout the planet. The governments are involved in this suppression of the life force bioenergetic field of the, of the world's populace for to kind of keep us in as an electronic fence like sheeple or dogs, like a, like a dog collar. So there's a low frequency that comes along. This is divine, designed, there's a plug that goes to it, you hang it from the ceiling, and you plug it into the wall, and this negates that elf wave, and the 5G will help tremendously. 
This is the Devastar, the larger one. That's for a two-story building or any one-story building over 1,500 feet. This is how you uh, can hook it in. We don't use the copper stake out the window in the ground, but you can ground it this way. But this definitely works within the house. Um, this device over here that you see hanging is a MIDI Fire Star. And this works in feedback with your body. Um, it's connected to a Tesla coil, which I'll demonstrate a little bit later. And you can see the violet flame, the purifying flame of the Nikola Tesla technology that is designed to heal and purify the body. For those of you who know about the Integratron, uh, built by George Van Tassel at the directions of the Venusians, you'll know that that was going to be the advanced healing technology. And I've received some messages uh, from the Queen of Venus, and we're going to be playing those a little bit later. And that's some exciting stuff. Um, this is the Omnion. It's a very beautiful crystal thing that I make and it has a lot of crystals, and this works in the pyramid systems. Uh, water meeting air produces negative ions, right? So uh, waterfalls, you know how you feel around a waterfall or at the beach when the waves are breaking? This is a negative ion generator. How do you feel in the forest? It's a little different than when you're in a sub-basement uh, area on New York with no negative ions, you're like, uh. So uh, the electrical nature and understanding ourselves spiritually is very careful, is very uh, important to our development. So we have uh, the Chinese call it chi, the Japanese call it ki, the Tibetans call it sumo, we could call it orgone or life force energy as coined by Reich, but this is the vital life force, the Hindus call it prana. So what else produces negative ions? Thunderstorms. That's nature's way of grounding out all the positive ion particles. When we create so much pollution and particulates in the air, it gives us a, a positive ion and we don't function well. Um, so in the Middle East, they have these big uh, storms and they're called the Homsen. And Homsen means 50. That's the average numbers of days of the year that this uh, winds blow. We know it as the Santa Ana, uh, the uh, Homsen, the Witches' Winds, the Chinook, the Fawns in Germany. This produces a positive ion content in the air, and this is what pyramids can counter effect. The Russians were wearing it on their heads. So basically, sinitis, rhinitis, polynesis, a lot of depression issues can come from a lack of uh, uh, negative ions in our life. So you wear the pyramid on your head and this has a balancing effect. Now I wear it in my car and I, I'm surrounded. What you see here is just part of my living room. Uh, I keep my stock of the pyramid so I have a lot of pyramid energy and I'm very familiar with it, working with it for over 37 years with Dr. Fred Bell. That small pyramid out there is something like this. I'm manufacturing them. And if anyone wants a pyramid over their bed, that one out there I'm selling for 350 bucks. It's kind of a used, uh, my demonstrator model. <clears throat> the new ones are going to cost anywhere from $1,000 to $1,600. The capstone alone is $185. So it's a good deal out there if someone wants to take home a nice seven-foot pyramid. Serotonin levels get very high. So when they go to the court, say, oh, I, ki oh, I ki killed my wife. She was uh, talking to a sheep. You know, in the Middle East, they go, and it was the Homs, and that's kind of like a, 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 an ins a temporary insanity plea, and the judges actually will grant leniency because when the serotonin levels in the brain go up, people freak out. What happens with the full moon? The serotonin levels go up. The cycles of the body are affected by the planets. This is the science of astrology. Astrology, the planets have magnetic influences on your body. It's, the stars don't compel, they impel. There's tendencies. We are a musical uh, field, a note that is working with uh, the life force energies on the planet that affect our endocrine glands. So constantly we have a song, a universe, universe, one, one song, 
We are a part of this divine creation, and it has a sacred geometry, a sound, and a color that's manifesting through us at every moment. And our idea, the consciousness, the spiritual evolution of the extraterrestrials and the information that they're sharing is for us to balance ourselves and in our bodies, in our minds, thoughts, and spirit, and connecting to the divine essence and the natural energies of the universe. And the pyramid acts as a feedback mechanism for you. These more advanced designs by the, by the Pleiadians are, are uh, pretty good. This is called the irradiator over here. And this device is... Uh, Oh, I'm sorry, over here. This device has crystals on it. You'll notice there's crystals on the bottom. And it sits on a plastic plate, and we put a negative ion generator up, and it creates quite a series of fields of energies. You lie under this crystal. You have a master crystal. You have crystals above, and you focus and try to create what you want. This is a manifestation device. And this is understanding how your thoughts create things. And we're like little cavemen here. We can't control our minds. We are distracted. We have electronic disruptions. And we also have a, a, actually a, a plan and coordinated attack against our spiritual light bodies using certain technologies by elite, uh, groups of the world and um, we could talk about that forever but you got David Icke telling you what's up and many other people so genetically altered foods you have chemtrails that are metal that are helping to increase their satellites that are dampening uh, our consciousness field by interjecting harmful electromagnetic waves into you and actually controlling you. They can make you hungry, thirsty, fearful. When they have these protests and demonstrations, they set up these vans and they're arrating them into the crowds and people get angry and upset. It's kind of like a drunk person. So you got to be careful and follow your thoughts and monitor your feelings. It's very important when we're with each other that we monitor our feelings and remember the sacredness and the divine energies that are inherent in our consciousness. And uh, we're very distracted. There are so many things. We don't even have time to think. We're running out on money, getting the car, dealing with our material world. And we, we're going to have to shift this. In fact, the shift is coming. So you see the crystals in the bottom. We take a crystal from the local environment to connect to the Akashic records for your vortex within your system. We have a Tesla coil that connects and you're creating scalar waves. You can put information in the mixing chamber. And there's a whole technology in the book that you can uh, use uh, and it goes with the moon cycles. Uh, you want to manifest uh, a car, you could put a picture in there and a guy would say, I want a new car. And really, this is used as divine intervention. If people would put these as feng shui in large groups through meditation, this can amplify the meditation. So 10 people meditating, it's like a thousand. The energy frequencies connect, and I promise you that the Galactic Confederation knows about these things, and they hover around this type of energy when it comes. They scan, uh, and they're, they're working. Uh, this is the mega orb. That's the base, um, and they have different crystals. Um, in the center of that Omnion, I've gathered crystals from Bosnia, Lake Titicaca, Island of the Sun, Island of the Moon, near Alampu, Tiwanaku, Haleakala, the Bosna Crater, sacred sites in China. So I put those in, and now that centerpiece that raises and lowers with the full moon, the new moon is at the top, at the full moon it comes down, it's over the master crystal. Several cycles, if you meditate at the same time, with pure intent, you can affect changes in your life. So this is called divine intervention. And the divine intervention is to help us help ourselves. They're giving healing technology. There's a, a lot of political stuff that I know about. Now you notice a different frequency. Say we had seven. The, the smallest waveform there would be a diamond. And we use the seven different crystals and diamonds to uh, irradiate this pyramid energy along a specific frequency. 
and then we use crystals and lasers, you're going to see that. This is the vortex and Fred, kind of Fred Bell's, an artistic version of the vortex that is created when utilizing these uh, pyramids. And it looks like a, a wormhole with a large event horizon at the end, but the, the, the queen of Venus told me that this uh, works. That's a Christos. I have one of those at home, uh, and I haven't finished it yet. So um, let's go back here. So uh, in the Bible, there's a, a verse, Isaiah 19, 19. In the midst of the land of Egypt, in the heart and the border thereof, there lies an altar to the Lord. That is the Great Pyramid. Uh, look at that vortex. That's what happens when you connect a Tesla coil. You see the divine masculine and feminine vortex? Because the pyramid principle is the principle of matter made flesh. If I was to take um, a, a piece of metal, a square metal, and I put it underneath a Carillion photograph, it would have no life force. The pyramid has the unique characteristic of being an inanimate object that has an aura. And auras are important. We have plants and humans. Um, the Christ principle is, is a principle of mind uh, that conditions uh, and transmutes matter through time and space back to spirit. That's what we're here doing, is to embody the Christ principle of uh, invoking the light and transforming into a, 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 a spirit. So the pyramid itself is really a trans-dimensional portal. It's bringing seven levels of energy into the body. Now, the Galactic uh, Federation, uh, of, there's many different federations, by the way. We'll get into that in the second part. But um, they could, as I said, they could determine the type of consciousness. Like, there's different areas where they would come into the Earth, like over the Nazca Plains. They would come to the Nazca Plains, and those different animal shapes are actually represent different vibrational uh, uh, frequencies for them, and so that they can come into the proper time-space continuum of the Earth, because we have our own frequency. That's a picture from the Bible that reflects some of the information that's coming out in the Dead Sea Scrolls that extraterrestrials were landing and talking to the people of the time. This is a sample of the different type of gemstones. They all have different frequencies and affect different organs. Our endocrine glands, if you think of seven notes of the musical scale, right? And you have seven colors of the rainbow. The musical scale, if we do half notes, there's actually 12. 13 is the octave. Let's look at the, the life force body. We have seven endocrine glands, but we have 12 organ meridians. So this is a new science of healing that's going to be coming out, is understanding the acupuncture lines are related to the chakras and actually have different specific frequencies, specific colors, and specific gemstones, and uh, sp specific nutritional needs. And so sound, light, and color healing is how the uh, extraterrestrials do it. You go in and they have a crystal and sound goes on, and it reestablishes your consciousness into your divine ketone of your soul contact. This is part of the initiation process that I've been through. Um, why do we need these tools? Hey, if we were living in pure, pure nature without all the, the pollutions, we wouldn't really need all these tools so much, although we, <clears throat> they are used consistently in other worlds. Some of these are used to enhance telepathic communication <clears throat> over vast distances. So, um, hopefully we can clean this world up and we won't need uh, this and we'll be attuned and have a, a higher genetic resonance to that. Of course, this works through our chakras. You see, I, I talked about the frequencies of the different planets on the endocrine glands. As they move, it causes different feelings and tendencies to come out. Um, we have some... Uh, gifts from the Pleiadians and the Germanians. A single disc, and you can check this out at the booth, um, contains 144 pyramids in the concentric Fibonacci spiral, and we have a gemstone in the center. And the gemstones we can test you for to determine. And what these do is they keep your body strong. They do not... Um, um, protect. They don't stop the 5G. It keeps your body strong. And to understand that, you have to understand a little bit about the DNA.
When you're born, you have uh, you know, 46 base pairs per turn. In other words, you have 46 DNA, a combination of the, it's like a ladder and it's twisted. Between each turn, when you're born, you have 46. By the time you're my age, you maybe have uh, sometimes six to eight. So all the information in the ladders uh, that are producing your, your body, the information is not complete. So your skin gets saggy, your hair gets gray, and uh, aging takes place. Primarily, this is uh, due to the uh, radiation on the earth. <clears throat> the governments know this, uh, but they continue to mess around with unsafe nuclear power, and uh, the nuclear explosions that they did has caused a lot of radiation, and yes, it's melting the caps. Yes, our carbon fuels are affecting it, but realize, and we need to stop this, but realize the promotion of this information now is uh, to basically um, control us and to create a carbon tax and so that only the elite can afford to fly and drive cars. So this is a, uh, it's, it's a plan, it's a distraction. So we don't focus on the distraction, we, po we focus on the love and the light and the consciousness uh, that we have within us, the innate Christ principle, the divine life force, the seed atom, the diamond light, uh, that is within you. And that's what these technologies are for, is to help you feel it. You kind of, after you wear the pyramid and utilize these technologies for a while, you're going to feel it. And I'm going to show you some uh, stuff here when we get into the music portion and the demonstration of the violet wand with crystals and various things. And I'm going to show you uh, how you can utilize lasers and crystals to heal yourself. It's a natural thing. You don't have to be, a, oh, I'm doing this. Because once you have the light and color and just sitting in its presence, it's a wonderful natural energy that manifests changes biologically in your body, as I mentioned. So this is how the receptor works. There's actually a design on the back, but this works to the, uh, there's a, a solar life force energy that comes in. It filters it. It puts it through this. And how does it do that? The parabolic lens is focused. The sh that, that shape of that lens is focused at, at 22.3 megahertz. That is one of the primary frequencies that the DNA re replicates. And how it replicates is the ladder splits in half. It sends out a scalar wave. And it uh, calls forth the nutrients within your body you know, the, the, the four, whatever the uh, building blocks, I forget, A, G, T, whatever they are, they come and they build the other ladder. <clears throat> but because of the aging and the disruption of the electronic frequencies in our life, the uh, energy is, uh, <clears throat> um, it's not exact. So instead of getting 43 base pairs per tune, you're getting, you know, 42, 41. By the time you're 20, you're down to make maybe 23. You're already halfway there. And by the time you're 30, you're going, I'm, it's changing. So um, this is a technology that I've just been told, and I'm going to read direct messages from Valiant Thor and from the Queen of Venus in regards to certain elements of this technology and certain new things that you haven't ever heard before. Uh, they're uh, going forth with the Galactic Confederation. So that's the DNA. You can see the... Uh, the unprotected DNA is disrupted, but the, this technology of the receptors uh, charge the body, maintain the DNA frequency. It's not that um, when you, like I could do a muscle test, I don't have time and I don't have it, but if I had like airplane glue in a plastic bag, I would, I would take a big strong guy up here, I'd muscle test him and go, he'd be strong. I put the, the receptor on him, he'd be a little stronger. And then I would, um, uh, give him a bag of glue, uh, and I would go breathe this, he'd go weak as a kitten. He's breathing the toxins. Then I would put the receptor on him, breathe the bag of glue, and you maintain strong, because the DNA will not uh, 
take in the toxins. It will ignore it. So this is the technology of uh, the light devices of the Pleiadians. This is the Andromedan holographic projector given to Dr. Fred Bell. And I used to have, be, sit up there and I'd have conversations with them through him. He would telepathically um, relay some information. Um, and his contact, her name was Lyra. Um, but this has two of these discs and four stones. Uh, so there's uh, 188 pyramids. Um, and this merges the timelines. This is a difficult thing to understand. This is kind of like the ascended masters. They don't talk in time. They, uh, as it is, so it is, it is done. So this energy merges the timelines and causes within your personal environment um, the problems that you have don't even exist f from the future. It's kind of, I won't say it negates karma because everything has to go through it, but it allows you to process this information. And you wear these for a while and you take them off, you will notice a difference. So the first one is a battery charger, keeping you strong and building up your energy. The second one is actually uh, what releases what is called the Vitronic life force. The Venusians have a secret science of ascension, which I'm going to talk a little bit about if we get time. Anyway, the Order of Melchizedek um, talks about the pyramids. I was asked by Valiant Thor to join the Royal Order of Melchizedek. It's a, a, a group I had an initiation, and one of the Venusians came and put his hand on my head in Las Vegas. I didn't see him before. I did the initiation. I was looking. He went and sat down, and I looked, and after the break, he was gone. So I've had a lot of uh, kind of clandestine face-to-face uh, -face contacts, and it's always telepathic. You can't you can't go, oh, that, I know who you are. And that happened a little later. I met Valiant Thor uh, once in Utah. He was with some women. And uh, I go, that looks like Valiant Thor. So I looked to his belly button. He's not actually from Venus. He's not born, so he doesn't have a belly button. So I looked, but he, they have a trans imagery thing where I, I looked at it and the thought went away. I didn't realize till later that they had done that because they don't want that type of attention. They're very, 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 very careful with whom they contact and you must go through a protocol of uh, proving your, your metal to maintain your consciousness in the space of love and the vibration of spirituality that you can receive the information. And that's what we're working for and that's what's coming soon. And that's what I'm going to be sharing the next thing. So we talked about the musical scale, the notes. I'll be playing some music while we do our crystal healing. Um, cats like it. There's Dr. George King. That's with the device. He was a famous contactee. Um, so uh, prayers to the earth. Um, the Native Americans don't pray to the sky. In the peyote ceremonies, they send their prayers into the earth. So I, I, I went to many rainbow gatherings uh, in my life. Oops, uh-oh. And um, thousands of people gather for prayer for seven days of, of peace. And it's a bunch of hippies. It's kind of degenerated in a party. But at one of those gatherings, I met the Mahavatar Babaji who taught me Kriya Yoga. That's another story. Um, there's a heart program, and the heart program is created by using pyramids, huge amounts of energy, and they create a lot of negative stuff. So that's the, the, the pyramid energy. It's a bit of an infomercial, but um, if you guys are interested, I have some, I'm going to offer some very large discounts. A little, the crowds are a little slow here, and it would really help me if you're interested. I have some books, uh, maybe uh, some pyramids are pretty cheap. You can work with that. It's good. I have uh, some discounts on those. So now I'm going to um, <clears throat> get you to I'm going to play you the messages and read the messages from the, the Venusian hierarchy of light. And I, hello. Anyway, so that's, we're back on. Okay, that's good. So uh, now I'm going to go into the Venusian secret science of ascension, which is the fun part. I, this is what I really like to uh, share. But, um, come on. Oops.
There we go. So we'll get rid of that. So now I'm going to play for you uh, the message from the Queen of Venus. And before I do that, I'm going to give you a little background uh, to the Queen of Venus. And my friend actually met her. She was born in uh, 1585. And um, she was given to a nunnery. Her parents gave her to the Catholic Church. And um, at 15, she decided to run away. She went, was running to meet her brother, who was a uh, conquistador in South America. So she, got on, she was headed towards Barcelona in a boat. On the way, she found herself in a hayloft and was visited by an angel, crackling energy around him. And he spoke to her. We don't know exactly what he, what he said, but he did tell her, uh, do not take the path. Don't go during the day. Go to another way to Barcelona, and you'll meet a priest there. You must tell him of my contact and uh, she did so avoided the authorities she was dressed as a man and uh, he allowed her to join his personal guard as a conquistador and she learned the lance the sword the battle axe the whole thing and she became head of his personal security and I believe and I may have this wrong but she uh, went on a boat with him to South America Eventually, she was discovered by another conquistador who tried to rape her. She killed him, went to the church for sanctuary, and after two and a half years, the Pope granted her safe passage. She told her story. Uh, he gave her a papal seal, so you could dress as a man uh, and continue. So she came back, and she found out she wasn't aging. She followed the various Catholic missions, changing her, uh, her uh, name and identity so they wouldn't notice that she wasn't aging, and actually followed Junipero Sierra all the way up to California's, where in Solano, California, she was told by the Spanish to keep an eye out and see what's going on with the um, uh, Russians that were over there doing gold and beaver trapping. She saw this guy named Ivan. She goes, she was suspicious. He didn't have any beaver traps or mining equipment, as he said. And he told her about Mount Shasta. So she went up to Mount Shasta. She went back to Mount Shasta, got her pack mules, went up, and there was Ivan on the mountain. And then he said, I'm not Ivan. I'm the he was actually Lord Dismas. Lord Dismas is what we would call the accidental apostle. Does anyone know who that is? That's the one that died with Christ on the cross. He said, you'll be with me in paradise. The good thief. He actually was a Robin Hood, robbing the rich and helping the oppressed and the poor of his time, and that's why he was crucified. Uh, that's a, that's a, was a good thing. So they walked into a portal in Mount Shasta, and I believe I know where it was, and she went to Venus at 237 Earth years, where she's lived ever since. She became the first contactee of George Adamski. Um, so we're going to get into that and the esoteric anatomy of the secret science. But first, I better play her message so you can hear her voice. And she's, I got some other ones that are personal messages to me. I can't, I don't want to play them all because some of it's private information and, and uh, some other things. But I'm going to play for you the message of the Queen that she gave to Raymond Keller that announced my conference last year in Mount Shasta. And I'll continue the story of how she became the Queen and some very interesting stuff. And what's happening now is the, the Galactic Confederation, or our brothers and sisters from space, as I call them, are here to share us through reawaken us to the truth of who we are. At this point, we are not ready for open contact with the TV system and everything. I mean, it's just nuts. We'd want to attack them. We'd want to use them, put them in a zoo and poke them and prod them. We wouldn't respect the message. The Venusians are very high technology. They have security devices. And if you're good and come to my booth, I might show you how one of those work. My friend Raymond has one. So this is the message from the Queen of Venus. Dear friends okay. of Venus, greetings to all seekers of truth in the Victory of the Light study groups scattered throughout China. Oh, oh. I heartily commend you for your diligent efforts. It's the wrong one. A profound this is one she gave Dear to the people in China. Venus, 
I didn't. To all seekers of truth in the victory of the light. I didn't want to. Uh, it's more technological. It talks about tachyons and stuff like that. She she shows off her uh, the knowledge. The influence of Venus, the solar hierarchy of light of your sister planet Abihar, extends joyous greetings to the inhabitants of the Earth. This is Queen Ordo of Abuhar I'll show you picture. You on a recorded message delivered to our emissary, the incarnation of Publius Virgilius Morrow, the one commonly known amongst you as the Cosmic Ray, Dr. Raymond Keller, the author of the Venus Rising trilogy of books, on Sunday, 10 February 2018. You should be receiving this That's message the on the night of Valentine's Day, Wednesday, 14 February 2018, over Rain's radio. Our love and thanks are also extended to our cosmic brothers Jeff Renzi, Frank Chile, and all the other brothers and sisters working diligently behind the scenes at Rain's Radio, bringing to the public's attention the truth that is out there, the truth about intelligent life forms filling the immensity of space and their visitations to Earth in the Ventus, beam ships, swaps, Merkabas, and other ethereal star vessels that your military and political authorities have erroneously referred to as unidentified flying objects. The planet Abihar, or Venus as you know it, represents the highest manifestation of love and peace in the solar system. Your ancestors from the remote past recognized our world as the celestial sign for the goddess of love and beauty, as well as the herald of peace and understanding. On this night of St. Valentine, it is duly recognized by the solar hierarchy of light in place on Abihar that a message of love and peace is exactly what your world's perplexed inhabitants require at this time for the purposes of securing their own mutual development and bringing about the long prophesied Aquarian Age of Enlightenment and Universal Understanding. It saddens us that your governments and religions so burden you with endless laws and ordinances, completely ignoring the sound advice of the master teacher Jesus the Christ, sent among you two millennia ago, who taught the simple principle of unfailing kindness in love for the infinite creator, as expressed and manifested through love for your own divine essence in the embodiment of the celestial spark that indwells and permeates all of your neighbors. Remember that the angels of the celestial worlds, and particularly of Abihar and the other planets of our solar system, both seen and unseen, forever attend you. As the human being is well motivated by love, our advice is to continue to manifest kindness and good works, for you never know when you shall find yourself in our presence. Your manifestations of love will garner you the prize of life, both happy and eternal. This is how we shall build a new earth and in turn bid you entrance to the glories of Abihar and other orbs in the Pleroma. We, along with our brothers Cosmic Ray and Frank Chile, as well as our sisters Omnek Onek and Cherry Lynn, look forward to meeting you on the slopes of Mount Shasta on the 27th through 29th of July for the From Venus with Love World Conference. Our blessings are transmitted to you and yours on multidimensional planes for a happy Valentine's Day. Keep love in your heart every day so that each and every one becomes a special Valentine celebration. I regret that I cannot speak to you live at this time as I am conducting an important mission in the Saturnian system. This is the Queen Order. Now, you'll know she has a Spanish accent. And the reason is, is because she was born in the Pyrenees. Yeah, she was a Basque in the region of Spain and France, beneath the Pyrenees Mountains there. And that's when she was taken as a nunnery, and she lived in South America. And she has a safe house in Brazil and travels the world. She actually um, is quite uh, an adept. And recently, she was chosen as the Queen of Venus. Uh, that picture that you see with my friend there, that's Raymond Keller. Uh, that's in a very unique experience of time travel, that they came back to 1954 to a giant rock convention. 
ship actually crashed due to the interference of the tachyons in their transportation device. But they were at the right place and they contacted other contactees and got the transport back to Venus. They were supposed to be bilocated on Venus and here observing, but the radiation experiments from the nuclear bombs, uh, and it was the Queen's air, she goes, bring it down to a thousand feet. So Raymond had his own uh, Nimbus, and uh, he brought it down to a thousand. She goes, I, I mean 2,000. He goes, what, uh-oh. <laughs> It broke up. She said, take my hand, grab your Nimbus, and they started free falling to the earth from a thousand feet. She used her security device, which you could see her hands holding like this, and she uh, created a cushion and they landed. This picture was taken by Pal and Dixie Garrett, who secreted them, helped them change their clothes. They're wearing all black because uh, it's by location technology used from the Metron Time Temple, they, uh, the, the Dimbus goes to absolute zero and frosts over. So for some reason they wear black. So that's the queen. You'll notice, oh, I didn't start the show, sorry. So um, I'm going to get back up there and start the show real quick. But exciting stuff here. I, I feel very honored that I'm allowed to do this. In fact, I'm um, a little... Um, I'm a little uh, uh, hesitant to actually uh, do this. Let's see, slideshow. Uh, play from the start. And, okay. So my first contacts took place with the Pleiades through Fred Bell in the house. Uh, ships would follow me down the hill at night. I'd go up to his house. I was doing certain metaphysical things. And the ships would come in when these systems were there. It's hard to explain. The ship literally comes into the building and they take me out of my body. I had experiences very difficult to explain uh, the, these different uh, experiences and out of body. It took me many years. And in fact, I got a little kind of freaked out and wondering what's going on. So, um, and I believe I met Semyasi several times incognito. Very, very beautiful, special energy. She had this youthful look, and yet she was 360 years. She's like 400 years now, but she looked very young, but she had like a, the face had a, uh, a very, it looked older and mature. This is uh, uh, at Howard Menger's house. This is Valiant Thor and his crew. That's Commander Valley. He's quite handsome. I, there's some great stories. When he went to Las Vegas, uh, Dr. Frank, he would go to his room to pick him up where they would go to uh, the ship, which sits out at Lake Mead, where my sister and I would remember the old dock. It was very close to there. And Pal went up to the front desk because uh, they had changed his room. And where's Dr. Frank? The woman passed out. He said another time they were walking out of there and some girl with the drinks at the Rio was like following him and dropped a whole thing of drink. So he has quite a bit of charisma. And he was the one who worked with Valiant Thor. He, I, mean, I mean, he was the one that worked with Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla was his student, and he was teaching him technology. Here's another picture of that group. Uh, this is a good picture of this woman who I met in 2007 at Dr. Frank's Inner Circle meeting in Las Vegas. She was sitting at the back. No one noticed her. I kept looking. I go, that's, I'm thinking, that's chill that's you know and she's looking at me smiling and I look and she just keeps smiling my girlfriend's like would you stop looking at that <laughs> and finally I got in the talk to her so to you know keep the protocols I said so we're, so you ever seen a UFO and she said UFO no but I've seen a spaceship once in New Jersey that's where this was that was telling me that I was correct I followed her outside I was kind of insistent I wanted to get more information that she she was on the phone and disappeared and never came back but that's kind of the the types of uh, contacts there's a movie attempting to be made about his uh time at the pentagon for three years where he helped the government create this the anti-gravity suits that the pilots wear to, so they don't pass out with the high g forces he did certain other things never in weaponry but the government was very insistent uh, and some of them to try to actually uh, get this technology. How do you go so fast? How do you make a right angle turn? All of these things the government wanted. And the military guys are uh, just messed up. As it uh, was told to us by, um, 
I think it, yeah, by Richard Miller and the Solar Cross groups where the, back in the 50s when the contacts were taking place, they said the Pentagon, you know, is one of the largest concentration of closed minds in the known universe. <laughs> So, uh, it's messed up. So, um, right now, we can take part in this process of awakening of the external hierarchy of light and to, to share the truth and the knowledge of the spiritual teachings that we do not know. Christ came to teach the message. The different avatars teach us these truths, but we refuse to embody them. You know, the religious leaders put themselves in positions of elite authority, wearing robes or swamis, and people will bow and pray and sit around you, and ooh, you're, you have the clothes, you must know what you're doing. There's a, a difference between the real spirituality, and you can wear, spiritual people can wear certain clothes, it doesn't matter, but... Um, there's a lot of hidden truths that we need to uncover for ourselves. Now, I've been knocking on the door, and I have a lot of, and I think uh, some of the recent contacts and, and the joy that I'm experiencing uh, learning knowledge from my friend who lived on Venus for two months is due to my knock, and they go, just, he's really, let's open the door a little crack and go, what do you want? You know, Come on in. That's a horse of a different color. Be nice. So I'm getting a little more uh, context. That's the Venusian scout craft that took place in the desert of the of Venusian Ventla. It's a local ship that is dispatched from a cigar-shaped ship and basically only runs on the they, they could slings they could just leave the earth and go outside the orbit they would just keep going straight until they hit something uh, but it's mostly designed to be within the earth I, I don't know all the details but the contactee was george adamski so i want to talk about different types of ascension jesus christ was the first uh, physical being in uh, our universe to attain to the seventh dimension they had six dimension uh, um, they had achieved the sixth dimensional uh, development. This has to do with the mental and the spiritual universal plane. So um, I don't have time to go into that completely, but on my website there's something called the Cosmic Plan. And this plan describes the historical uh, political situation in our universe that took place for um, uh, hundreds of millions of years. So you will get a kind of an understanding of the different councils and these different higher dimensional beings. We think of things physically. They have a hierarchy. And the hierarchy is based on service and knowledge of lifetimes and lifetimes. And the masters, both male and female, uh, are uh, on these councils and uh, act as teachers um, uh, to the to the the populace, and they run their worlds. We can't even we don't even know the truth of a hundred years ago on Venus because of their technology and living in the fourth dimension. They actually. Um, um, can access. That's Lord Dismas, the Ascended Master on Moria. When my friend went to Venus, uh, they watched the ascension of the previous Queen of Venus, Lady Bazu. And uh, they showed all, Lord Dismas came out and said, we're here to honor the, the lifetimes of uh, Lady Mazu. And, you know, he, you know, said uh, his uh, speech, and a hologram appeared in a giant football-like stadium, something like the Rose Bowl. Raymond estimated 50 to 70,000 Venusians were there. And um, it was a hologram of her life of service. You may remember her. She calmed the Jade Ocean. Her family, when she was seven years old, was fishermen, and she projected an etheric double and lifted them out of the ocean. Her parents were, sh her mother was shaking her because she was in trance and she dropped her brother. But another famous saint who patrols the, the solar system looking to help out people in distress came down and picked her up and eventually took her to Venus. Or she, she kind of had what's called a translation where she uh, served on Earth and Venus and eventually became the queen. Um, that's Dr. Frank Stranges. He used to go on board Victor One uh, in a group called the Council of Twelve, six Earth members and six uh, extraterrestrial members from various uh, 
areas. I don't, I wouldn't know anything about that, but they were talked about political things and uh, advised and worked with Valley and Thor. The queen, again, see that thing in her, in her right hand? That's a nimbus. This was in 1954 at Mount Palomar, and she appeared with um, uh, some other beings, and I guess I lost that picture. Anyway, there's uh, Raymond. Uh, okay, so um, there's a, these three guys from Venus, uh, two guys from Venus that were there. Um, I, I'm looking back there. It says 11 minutes and 45 seconds, and I was, uh, so I'm going to continue. Um, anyway, um, so on the Venusian secret science of ascension, we have to understand our bodies in esoteric anatomy. So our endocrine glands are force centers at etheric levels which direct prana and life force into our body. Uh, this is in Dr. Bell's book. This is the science of the various planes. And I can explain all this a little technological. This is a good one. This is about the vitronic life force. Number four is your cerebellum or your unconscious mind and connects to your autonomic nervous system. Number two is the vitronic screen. This is your telepathic projector and receiver, and it's your mind's eye. It has optic nerves. Um, uh, number three is the pineal gland. Uh, and number one is the pituitary. That's the receiver, the, the growth hormone. This is a food, so we're supposed to eat proper food. I'm going to have to explain this at my... Uh, show, so I'm going to ask the volunteers to come up here. Uh, Renee, did you want to do... Renee? Okay, do you want to be the sample, take the thing off your neck? I'm going to let my assistant be the person. Come on up. I'm going to ask, uh, where did Nate go? Nate, come on up. Uh, Wendy, come on up with the lasers. And um, Wendy, you can turn on the violet wand. Renee, lay on the table. We're going to show you how lasers and crystals can work in healing. This is going to be a short version of this experience. This, what they're setting up here, this is the life wave of a soul. This is to understand that we are, our goal is to become solar beings and to grow in consciousness. And while we're doing this, I forgot, I better read the messages from the queen that I kind of forgot. So I'm going to um, go ahead and read these right now. I'm going to go ahead and turn on uh, the violet flame. We're going to put Sintamani stones and crystals on our various chakras. So please come up, Anthony. Um, if you could put this larger crystal between her legs, and you're going to shoot some lasers in here. And I do this on the ground. I do a crystal grid layout, or we do it here. So um, this is a violet wand. A Tesla coil, it has a, a light shocking, but we're going to put it on here. And we actually shoot the laser uh, into, through the light onto the stone. So you can do that. We have uh, a double terminator on her thyroid. We have another crystal here on her thymus gland over her si solar plexus. And um, Anthony, please come up and, and use the lasers and focus them up here on this crystal. So you can have two lasers. Uh, this is a, a design you can see. And you can put this, I have full laser systems that rotate around with crystal, with uh, disco balls. Anthony. Anthony, hold this as well. And um, Eduardo, why don't you come on up? I'm going to have you work some uh, of these other crystals. I'm going to cover all of the endocrine glands, the solar plexus. This is the front of the sexual chakra. And then the root chakra is down here. And then um, we put uh, one up here. So uh, now we're stimulating the endocrine glands and entrainment. And this works. Uh, can I have another laser there? Right there, that works. Could you hand me that, ma'am? Thank you very much. Yeah, anyone, take it out of the stand. Thank you so much. So this is a, um, uh, a faceted quartz crystal. These are really fun. They're amazing. They're big jewels. And the Pleiadians, Semyasi, said that the quartz crystal is a perfect synthesis in spirit and matter in zero time. So we start vortexing the light. That's what we're doing on these chakras. So this is a, a pretty fun thing. Now shoot the laser right in here, and you see you can do this on the body. That jhana bed laser device 
is my design. It's not done properly, actually, uh, to my specifications, but the gentleman that made the original, um, they kind of copied him and did that. But I got some secrets in there, and maybe one day we can build one um, more properly. So what I do is I play some music with that, but I think I'm going to, um, uh, I want to read this message. We're going to go a little bit over, like the other person did, but probably not too much. So um, I'm going to read to you um, the message uh, from the Queen. And did I put that down here? Okay, so uh, edited Pyramid Systems, edited this is the Queen of Venus. You heard her voice. Uh, but this is a message I just received recently. I've, re I've redacted certain information that's personal and some questions that aren't really appropriate for the public. But this message, my friend Raymond uh, went to meet the security chief, and here it is. Brother Rob, it's October 2nd, 2019, and I'm with Alon at an undisclosed location in the United, Eastern United States. Um, First, many thanks for your fine word, your kind words. Here I have just a word of an uh, introduction about Alon. Let me, I gotta pull this up here. Okay. He is a member of the Shandurana, Shandaruna, otherwise known as the Earth-Based Security Detachment at the service of the Queen's Collective on Abahar. His first and only incarnation on Earth took place in the late 6th century BCE under the reign of Darius Great at Persopolis, the ancient ceremonial capital of the Persian Empire. He was born into the class of Magi, a high court magus and beekeeper of the Zoroastrian religious tradition. Uh, this is Publius Virgil Marl turning it over to Alan. When Raymond went to Venus, he was able to look at his previous lifetimes and his first lifetime on Earth. He was the poet scribe Virgil. Uh, he was a, uh, a scribe in the Roman M in the first Roman Caesar. He wrote of the letters and took down all the decrees of that uh, individual. And he met a woman named Lady Ankara who um, revealed that eventually she was a Venusian. And so I'd asked some questions. Um, uh, it is a great pleasure for me to answer your questions, Brother Rob, to the extent that I'm able. I regret that for lack of sufficient time, the others cannot personally answer. They have empowered me to do so on their behalf. Um, I sent them some gifts. But anyway, so uh, he took... He asked the questions telepathically, according to Raymond, and these are directly answered uh, um, by the this people, and I'll tell you who. As a friend and ally of Publius Virgil Maro, otherwise known as Cosmic Ray, the work in the work of enlightening earth seekers of truth, I will interrupt interpret the points of Virgil's reading um, to, of your correspondence where appropriate with my response, and Virgil will type Brother Rob. Michael Barton's books. Uh, are highly recommended for the most part as being inst instructive in guiding the seeker to an accurate knowledge and expansive knowledge of the Space Brothers and Sisters and their missions here on Earth. To the best of his ability, Brother Barton, otherwise known as Michael X, based his writings on most current scientific findings, along with accumulated UFO data and personal investigations. Like me, Brother Barton was a student of the occult sciences, enjoyed both metaphysical and real physical contact with Abish Abijans. That means, Abihar means planet of the bees, um, or the original inhabitants. Conscious uh, beings, uh, five feet large. Uh, okay. So I, I made some statements like, uh, you know, I'm not sure, I want to be careful, I'm not worthy, I'm revealing this information directly from the, the hierarchy of light, how do I do that? I, you know, I have these negative thoughts, and I, I don't want this to be an ego show where I'm, oh, I'm telling this information, come buy things from me. This is, this is to let you know that open contact is taking place. This is not unheard of. Letters to them, this has re been received many times. 
by certain contactees in the 50s, so I'm not alone in this, but you're going to find some of this information. So he said, unfortunately, this is a type of perception adhered to by devotees of many religions. This is from Valiant Thor. They falsely judge themselves harshly in the light of imposed standards of works rather than the faith that inspires positive actions on behalf of fellow humans and other souls on the planet. In the highest celestial hierarchies, it is understood that motivation of one's heart is a primary factor. One could say that act salvation is more like joining the French Foreign Legion. It doesn't matter where you are coming from, it's only your willingness to serve humankind to the best of your ability that counts. This is in accord with the teachings of Lord Dismas, the Regent and High Counselor on the planet you call Venus. Rob, tell people of the Earth that you are loved by uh, us, that all of, you are all loved by us brothers. Um, and sisters of Abahar. Your victory in the light mission is truly reflective of our efforts and desires to further the light and knowledge that Dr. Frank worked so hard to impart to humankind. Many celestial blessings always encompass and protect the light workers um, in the holy ring of purifying fire. Allow the angels to help each of us to do what we can to preserve this word world created for all humankind in the spirit of divine love. Let every moment be filled with God's creative power for all eternity. Our channels are always open to you. This is Alon for Valiant Thor, the commander, one, we are one mind. This is from, um, um, I'm not going to do the part about Corey Good. It says, there are ex uh, in, in regards to the blue spear avians, there are other there also exists many other hybrid species of extraterrestrials created in an epoch, epoch known as the Syrian Shift that occurred countless millennia ago with the expansion of the Alderaan forces outside of their own star sector. Um, your moon is a way station for interplanetary spacecraft, but is under the purview of Abahar and the commander reigns. Preparations are, this is new information here, preparations are ongoing for the eventual arrival of Terrans on the Moon and Mars. Colonization of the far side of the Moon and certain locations in Mars will be respected. This is all I'm permitted to say at this time. We decline to comment further on Corey Good's reliability. The truth will be recognized with an, an adequate gnosis received by the masses. Um, um, doc, that's a little... Uh, use discernment when listening to various speakers. Extreme discernment. Um, we shouldn't be using this information to further our egos, or but to just act as channels of information, revealing the presence of divine thoughts and ideas from our brothers and sisters. I've been asking about uh, some public, uh, about some changes and earth changes. They said, uh, we don't care about what other people are doing. Um, uh, we care more what people do to each other than uh, the natural shifts. I said Nibiru, they said it's 1,500 uh, um, years away. And here he says, um, I'm going to go a little over. They, uh, yeah, okay. So, so let me just finish this little message here. Um, um, you know what? Um, I'm going to let you all, if you're interested, to hear these messages, and maybe next time I'll be able to get a little a more time. I, I really need a, week's, a, a, a full uh, week to share this information. But it's very important if you want to see the rest of this message in regard to what's going on. Um, we can talk about uh, all of the uh, nuts and bolts and if, and, and when, but... People like J.J. Hurtak, myself, and others are having direct contacts and receiving information. This is spiritual information. It's important that we accept and begin to listen to the messages themselves. This is not about lights in the sky. It's about the consciousness. And so you, can, you can see, Rob, how many of you know where his booth is, where he's stationed, right behind these doors? Let's give him a great round of applause. That's a Thank lot you. of information he's bringing through. Do you feel like your Pleiadian and Venusian selves were activated? I always feel like I left this earthly realm and went 
to another realm when, I, when I'm around Rob Potter. Thank you so much, Rob. A lot of, lot of great information coming through. Wow.